The following is an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The World Baseball Classic, making America's game the international El pastime. Clásico Mundial de Béisbol hace del pasatiempo estadounidense una pasión internacional. The World Baseball Classic, baseball is spoken here. Special look in the dugout of Team Korea, the only unbeaten team in the World Baseball Classic. Two of their six wins have been against Team Japan. We see the Team Japan dugout and Japan trying to avoid the humiliation of losing three times in the tournament to their bitter arch rivals. Japan and Korea getting ready to play ball. This is what it's been. But what does it mean? It means baseball without boundaries, around nations, or emotions. It means flags before pennants, pride before pay, unity, opportunity on an international stage. It means effort and drama and the pure joy of play. If you have a problem with perfection, this team is not for you. With pinpoint pitching and refined defense, Korea's style is fundamentally sound. But add the offense of Sung Yap Lee and its sweet music. Now, Korea faces Japan for the third time with the first two intense, pressure packed one run affairs. Thanks to Mexico's heroics against Team USA, Ichiro and his teammates get another crack at their rivals with revenge on their minds and a trip to the final on the line. Korea against Japan, the semifinals in San Diego. To the fans, to the players, to baseball. What does it mean? It means the world. It's the World Baseball Classic from Petco Park San Diego presented by Taco Bell. And it's game two of this semifinal doubleheader Cuba with the major upset beating the mighty Dominican Republic to get to the final. And now we watch Japan versus Korea for the right to play Cuba for the first championship of the WBC. Hello everyone I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan and here we go again we've got the big crowd gathering. We've had some rain here. It's coolish. It is not hospitable out here, but perhaps uh, the conditions that they're a little more used to in both Japan and Korea. Anyway, they're ready to play ball. And one thing is certain they don't like each other. And this uh, Korean ball club, they've done everything well in this tournament. They've been the big surprise in the tournament. They've gone six and oh, led by their slugger, who also plays in Japan in the regular baseball season, Sung Yap Lee. And he has been something else in this tournament, Joe. Well, John, this team, the Korean team, has been called the dream team because no one gave them a chance. And the guy that's living the biggest dream is Sung Yap Lee because he has outslugged all the great sluggers in Major League Baseball. He has hit five home runs. And no one else has hit that many. Take a look at his swing. His swing reminds me a little bit of Ichiro in that he uses his top upper body more than his anything else. He uses his hands. He's an Ichiro with a lot of power. And I mean, this guy has been the catalyst for most of their victories. So it's going to be up to the Japanese team to be able to stop Sun Yup Lee if they're going to win this ball game. All right. So the Team Japan, the premier team in Asia for a long, long time. Now they're being tested by Korea. Japan led by the immortal, the revered Sadoharu Oh, the greatest home run hitter, the, the most prolific home run hitter in the history of baseball in any country. But now they face the really ultimate humiliation of losing their arch rivals three times. They were shocked when they got beaten by Korea in Japan, in Tokyo earlier. And then they got beaten the other night. They thought they'd been eliminated when they lost that ball game Wednesday. But they have risen from the ashes, Joe. Each your own company with another shot at them. Well, I find it interesting, John, in that they lost both games by one run. They've revamped their entire lineup. They've moved Ichiro from the leadoff spot 
to the third spot. So they're saying Ichiro is going to have to be the guy to lead them. He's going to have to be the guy to drive in some runs and makes up that one run deficit that they've had. And guess what? Ichiro is a very good RBI man. He always is one of the best hitters in Major League Baseball with runners in scoring position. So I expect him to do his job. But he's been doing his job. He has hit in all of the games in the Classic, but they're leaning on him a little bit more tonight. All right, so here we go. A little bit of a different wrinkle for Sadaharu O's Japan lineup. They've got the tried and true Koji Uehara on the mound, and he'll be up against Jay So. So, who's been excellent in this tournament and with big league experience last year with the Mets, this year upcoming with the Los Angeles Dodgers. So, ready to take the mound to take on Team Japan. This ball game about to begin. Tonight's telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Dish Network. And the crowd gathering. It's wet. It's cool. Not that comfortable out here tonight at Petco Park in San Diego, but they are ready to play ball nonetheless. And the Koreans have taken the field. So let's take a look at the Team Japan batting order presented by MLB 06, the show. It'll be Norichika Aoki in center field. Then Tsuyoshi Nishioka at second base. Ichiro is in right field hitting third. Nobuhiko Matsunaka, the designated hitter, Hitoshi Tamura in left field, Toshioki Imai at third base, Michihiro Ogasawa at first base, Tomoya Satozaki, the catcher, and Muninori Kawasaki, the shortstop, batting ninth, all up against Jay So. Had a very fine half year with the Mets last year. Now he's with the Dodgers, Joe. Well, that, the Dodgers got a great bargain here, I think. This guy's really coming into his own. He pitched great last year. He has a good sinking fastball, a slider, and a changeup. And he has definitely got major league stuff. All right, so here we go. And again, there's the manager, Inshik Kim, of the Korean ball club. And we've got the chanting and the noisemakers going already. Right back to So. Aoki is retired. With us here tonight is Peter Gammons down by the Korean dugout. Peter. Well, John, before the game, Sadahara always said that the single most surprising thing about this series and about the Korean team is their pitching. And that Jay So has been their best pitcher. I mean, he's pitched nine innings at two starts, one run. Of course, he won the game in Anaheim against Japan. But then, you know, last year, eight and two with a 259 earned run average after he came back from Norfolk up to the Mets. But as we know, this is the biggest game he's ever pitched in his career. Indeed. So. He's done extremely well in this tournament. So starting against Chinese Taipei in Tokyo did well. Then against Mexico in Anaheim last Sunday did extremely well. Bluffing the butt taking a strike is Nishioka. Nishioka speedy second baseman. For the Chiba Lote Marines this year Bobby Valentine's club he had 268 they won the whole thing he had 41 steals. That's a fastball strike two call. Ichiro is on deck. The leadoff hitter, whom we only saw for the one pitch, Aoki, hit 344 as a rookie last year with 202 hits. Oh, man. So long. A foul tip held by the catcher, Cho. That's all for Nishioka. That'll bring up Ichiro. And let's bring our other colleague now, Jose Mota, down near the Japanese dugout. Hey, John, one would think that after losing two games to Korea, the Japanese will talk about adjustments, but Ichiro Suzuki, Japanese star, told me, Tonight is not about adjustments. It's not even about skills. It's about heart. John, take it. All right. And he, he is a sort of a notorious figure to the Korean fans because of a, a statement that he made just before the tournament began in Tokyo two and a half weeks ago. They started there earlier than everywhere else because of the great travel distance. Ichiro has a base hit to right field. And he has hit in every game so far in this classic. Ichiro with his eighth hit in 25 at bats, now hitting 320 for the tournament. Well, the one thing about Ichiro is watch he uses his hands so well. See, that's a hand swing. He just kind of rolls him over and pulls the ball into the outfield. Nice swing. That's the way he hits. 
He pulled the ball. It looked to be several inches off the outside corner. Too. Well, he does everything with his hands. I think that's the key. That's why he's always so much in balance, even though he falls off the pitches sometimes. Well, Ichiro stole 33 bases for the Seattle Mariners last year. Here's Machinaka. Ichiro running on the first pitch. The throw down by Joe. Chase! And I think that's Ichiro's way of trying to take this team on his back and say, let's go win this ball game. They've lost each game by one run. Well, if I can make up one run in the first inning, that'll put us in a better position. Not a great jump. But as you can see, the throw is high, and he slides in safely. Third steal of the tournament for Ichiro. A little dribbler by Machinaki rolls foul along that first baseline. So the pitcher, the catcher, Insun Cho, both giving chase of that one, but it kicked off foul. And the count is 0 2 now to Matsunaka. And Team Japan needs a clutch hit right here with two down. Ichiro got the base hit. He stole his way into scoring position. But getting a hit in these clutch situations has not been easy against Team Japan. It has held its opponents in this entire tournament to a 116 batting average, 116 batting average with runners in scoring position. Only five hits in 43 at bats allowed in these kind of situations by the Korean pitchers, which is rather extraordinary. A little uh, equipment repair affected there by the catcher Cho. 0 and 2 to Matsunaka. We've already seen so throw a, uh, a devastating splitter earlier. That one is very high. And the count now 1 and 2. He went with the fastball there. One ball, two strikes. Matsunaka for the uh, the Hawks hit 46 home runs last year in Japan 46 homers 121 batted in and he's hitting 409 in the World Baseball Classic with the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks show out to speak to Jay so Jay so in his two starts in this tournament worked a total of nine innings allowing only one run and four hits against Chinese Taipei and Mexico but he had been outstanding. And he was as good as the Mets had in the rotation when they brought him back for the minor leagues the last couple of months of last year. Matsunaka has not struck out in 22 plate appearances in this tournament. Slaps it to third. And there's that Korean defense. The play made by Bumho Lee. And the inning is over. Ichiro stranded again. No hit there with a the runner in scoring position. No score. Team Korea is coming up. No score last of the first inning coming up now Japan has gone down and now Korea coming up and let's take a look at the Korean batting order presented by MLB 06 the show. It'll be Byung Yu Lee in left field then Jung Bum Lee in center field Sung Yap Lee the big home run slugger five home runs in the tournament first base. He stopped Choi now with the Dodgers several years in the major leagues a designated hitter Jin Young Lee in right field. Bum Ho Lee in at third base hitting six. Jin Mon Park at shortstop. In Sun Cho the catcher and Min Jae Kim is at second base batting ninth. And there is Koji Uehara of the Yomiuri Tokyo Giants one of the uh, premier pitchers in Japan although he had a losing record this past season. And he's set to go against Byung Yu Lee leading it off for Korea. And bluffing the butt taking too high for ball one. Lee hitting 182 in the tournament. It's not that the, the Korean team has hit exceedingly well. They're averaging just a little over four runs a game, hitting 262, all modest figures. It just seems like their pitching has been so good. Their defense has been superb. They're always in tight games, and then they get that clutch hit to, when they need it. Well, when you play good defense, you pitch well, especially with runners in scoring position, and you're always in the ball game, and you're just one hit away. From winning that ball game, they've been able to win six consecutive ball games, and I think, in, in, in effect, John, I think that works against them a little bit here. We haven't seen other teams be able to beat the former other teams two times or three times in a row. Now we saw Dominican beat Cuba last week. This week they couldn't beat them again. Now we've seen Korea beat Japan twice. So are they going to be able to do it the third time? Percentages say no. One ball, two strikes. And a high 
fly ball into shallow left field. There is Tomoda, and that is out number one. Korea, when the tournament opened in Tokyo, March 3rd, beat Chi Chinese Taipei in a very tight ball game. Sort of set the tone for the rest of the tournament. They they clobbered China, and then they upset Japan. That was the only game in which they actually were trailing in this entire tournament. They were trailing the first seven innings of the game. Sung Yap Lee hit a two-run homer in the eighth when they were down two to one to put them ahead three to two, and that was the final score. And a shocking win for them at the Tokyo Dome. On one, the count now to Jung Bum Lee, the center fielder. And I think one of the things that you'll notice for the fans to watch in this game, they will see a different hitting style in this ball game than we saw in the first ball game. These guys are used to hitting up more change ups and off speed pitches, and you can actually see them moving a little quicker, trying to hold their set and keep their hands back. That is foul on the third base side. One ball, two strikes now to Jung Bum Lee, the center fielder. Jung Bum Lee is hitting 429 in the tournament with three runs batted in. No score in the game. Last of the first. One out, nobody on. Uehara. Right center field. That's the big part of the yard. And that's into the gap. And Ichiro, along with Aoki, will have to chase it. Jung Bum Lee will stop at second base, even though the throw got past the relay man. A double for Lee, who had the big hit to knock in the winning runs in Wednesday's two to one victory. Well, we all know that each row's a gold glover, but that was the big part of the ballpark, and he couldn't handle it. See how he stays back, and it's a fastball, so he's a little late on it, but he goes to right center. They're used to keeping their weight back, and they do a good job of that, and he finds the gap. And Aki can't run it down, and neither can Ichiro. So by the time the ball gets back in, even though it gets away, Lee is at second base with a double. And we never saw one of those in game one today between the powerful Dominican Republic and Cuba. All singles in that first game. So here is the slugger, Sun Yap Lee, who last year played for Bobby Valentine's Japan champions, the Chiba Lotte Marines, had 30 home runs there. This year with the Yomiuri Giants upcoming, he once hit 56 home runs in a season in the Korean Professional League, an eight-team league. One ball, one strike. And he started hitting home runs early on in this tournament. He's got five home runs for the tournament. Ten batted in, and he's hitting 400. That's a fastball, a strike from Uehara. One ball, two strikes in the World Baseball Classic. Lee with more home runs than anybody. Adrienne Beltre of the Dominican hit four. Ken Griffey Jr. three. Derek Lee three. David Ortiz hit three. Lee more than all of them. One and two. And back to the screen. And again, they have a different approach to hitting. You can see them just waiting just a little longer and trying to recognize the pitch. And if they get fooled, they will slap the ball the other way. Whereas a lot of hitters we see today, once they're fooled, there's nothing they can do with it. They try to pull it. Uehara for the runner at second, one out. Lunged at by Sun Yap Lee, and that's into the second deck off to the left, out of play. One ball, two strikes. But he was fooled, but he tried to go the other way with the pitch rather than still try to pull it. Another left-handed hitter with lots of power is on deck. He stopped Choi. He's had several years in the major leagues. Currently with the Dodgers. Sun Yap Lee. There's He Sop Choi on deck. Sun Yap Lee could have been a Dodger. Little dribbler up the first base side. Foul. Well, the battle continues here. Sun Yap Lee is 29 years old. Hit 260 last year, had 30 homers and only 408 at bats. But reports were that at times he and Bobby Valentine were at odds. And he wanted to be the cleanup hitter all the time, whether he was hitting or not. Anyway, now they can be at odds from different dugouts. Sun Yap Lee will be with the Tokyo Giants. That is slapped foul down the left field line. Still one and two to Sun Yap Lee. It's a Korean team. I learned yesterday, Joe, actually got put together 
and has been together as a unit since January the 1st. So they got to know each other and they have put a premium on fundamentals and good defense and 17 gold gloves in the Korean leagues on this roster and back out of play again. Well he's doing a great job of fighting these pitches off change ups away fastballs in. But again it's their approach his approach to hitting is what you like once you get two strikes you got a runner in scoring position you're trying to get a single you're not trying to drive the ball out of the ballpark at this point. Well, he's a power hitter but in 20 at bats in the tournament only two strikeouts runner at second. He struck him out. Good pitch. Well he couldn't get him on strike so he went up and out of the strike zone with a fastball. And he's very upset with himself because he was fighting off some good pitches before but you see he's really late on that fastball because he was waiting on something off speed. There's Sadahara O saying he can't get up there on that one. <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing him just grab a bat and take at least one at bat. I don't think he could have gotten up there on top of that yeah, one. He would have taken it. Here's Hesop Choi. Two down, runner at second. And that off speed pitch over the outside for a called strike at his own one. Hesop Choi hit the back breaking home run against Team USA this past Monday night as a pinch hitter. They had walked Sung Yap Lee, whom we just saw, because he'd been so hot. Why wouldn't you walk him? Right handed hitter was coming up and he stopped Choi came off the bench and launched a three run pinch hit homer down the right field line and a three to one game was suddenly six to one. That's back out of play. You know what I like watching Uehara. I mean he is using his fastball and a lot of these pitchers have been throwing off speed pitches in situations where it's a fastball count. But well, watching him he will use his fastball and he looks like he's going to throw it upstairs and if they're going to swing at it they're not going to be able to handle it. Well and he is a strike throwing machine as are almost all of the team Japan pitchers they'd walked only 10 hitters in this entire tournament in previous six games. That's a ball inside in his two other outings Uehara had thrown a first pitch strike to 77 percent of all the batters he had faced. And in this game now he's thrown 20 pitches 16 of them strikes. Uehara who became a good friend of Roger Clemens when Clemens came in that one in the dirt and through the legs of the catcher Satozaki and over to third base goes Jumbum Lee. That one bounced in front of the catcher although I thought he should have stopped it. So runner at third now with two down there's Sadaharu O. The great Osan. And most of the people in his part of the world think that he can walk on water because he was just a fabulous, fabulous hitter. And he wasn't just a slugger, and he talked about how he made himself into a home run hitter. Because he had a much different approach to hitting than most hitters that you'll see. Up the first base side. That is handled by Ogawa Ogawasara, and he takes the play unassisted to retire Hisop Choi. No score after one inning. Tamura coming up. Japan coming up in the second inning against the uh, Korean team, the undefeated Koreans, with a 0 0 tie here today. The fifth place hitter, Hitoshi Tamura, leads off, followed by Imai, and then Ogasawara. Tamura against Jay So. Into the hole at short. This is going to be a long throw. Here it comes. Wow, nice play by Jin Man Park. Well, the interesting part there is he got himself set before the ball got there. Jin Mak Park was ready. Watch this. I mean, he gets himself set. The ball's hitting the hole. He's planning him, shading that way a little bit. But Jin Man Park, it gets a good throw, gets rid of it very quickly. Doesn't show a strong, strong arm, but he got rid of the ball very quickly. So Tamara retired Tamara had 31 home runs last year for the Bay Stars in Yokohama. Korea has not made an error in any game in this tournament. This is their seventh game. That's a strike to Toshioki Imai who is getting his first start in the tournament. Iwamura injured his uh, hamstring the other night in the uh, Wednesday game against Korea. In fact that was a, a critical play where he got thrown out at the plate. And in a game that ended up two to one and he kind of pulled up lame about halfway to the plate in that one. 
So Emai is getting the start in this one tonight from the Chibolote Marines. Again, another guy played for Bobby Valentine's Champions. 310 average, eight home runs last year. Cutting over from third base is Lee. And that is out number two. And you know what you can see is interesting. Both of these teams, when they get two strikes on them, they're trying to put the ball in play. Although the Koreans will strike out a lot more than the Japanese players. But if you watch them, they're trying to put the ball in play. I mean, he threw the bat at the ball. He doesn't take a big, healthy swing with two strikes. And we saw that from Sung Yap Lee. He was trying to put the ball in play. And you see him just kind of throw the bat at the ball. He does not want to strike out. They want somebody to have to make a play. I mean, he stays back pretty well, but that was a tough pitch. And he just threw the bat at the ball. I mean, he did well to make contact. Yeah, and that, but that's the point. They're trying to make contact after two strikes. Here is Michihiro Ogasawara, and that's a foul off the left field line. Ogasawara for the Nippon Ham Fighters. Did 282 last year, 37 homers, 92 runs batted in. And his nickname is Guts. They don't even use his first name. They just call him Guts Ogasawara. On one to Guts. And that's too low. One ball and one strike. So that's not going to be like Ichiro where they just call him by the first name. No, they're going to use. Okay. <laughs> well, I, technically, that's what he told me. He said to just call him Guts. If they say, who did you have dinner last night with? They say Guts. Hey, it works for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the choice between Guts or Ogasawara, I'm going yeah. with Guts. Yeah. <laughs> Two down, nobody on. No scores. Second inning. One ball, one strike. Rakes one. That one into the right field corner and a leaping catch by Jin Young Lee. The inning is over. Three up and three down. No score. Korea, Jin Young Lee will be coming up. Here we go now. Korea comes up in a 0 0 game against the Japan right hander, Koji Uehara. Uehara, who's had two other outings in this tournament, has pitched exceedingly well. There's a called strike to Jin Yong Lee, who just made that catch to end the first half of the inning. He'll be followed by Bum Ho Lee and then Jin Man Park. And that's a ball down and in from Uehara. This is the catch we were talking about, and a ball hit by Ogasawara. Well, it, he, he thought he was going to, he was running toward the corner. There's a little angle out there that he had to negotiate and make sure he didn't get caught up in it so he leaped before he got there and he made the catch there's a little angle right here and it kind of comes in toward the field yeah it's it's weird down there in that right field corner there's a there's there a it is. The you can see it right there. here look at that angle so it's rather short if you had a right to the foul pole but it angles out quickly from there and he fooled him with that one maybe a splitter or a Straight change, the count now two and two. Jin Young Lee leading it off here for Team Korea. There's the second baseman, and Nishioka throws out Lee. There is one away. Very quick feet there. Shown by Nishioka. Moved over quickly, got in front of the ball. Now Bum Ho Lee will come up as we get the uh, the on the move look here at beautiful Petco Park. I think the rain has stopped. We had some rain just before game time. And it is 0 1 to Bum Ho Lee. Lee played for the uh, Hanwha Eagles in Korea. Hit 273, 26 homers, 68 batted in last year. That's a foul out of play off to the right. And quickly it is 0 and 2. And again, we're seeing strikes being thrown by both pitchers, but especially Uehara. Uehara, in his first two starts in the tournament, had pitched 10 innings without walking anybody. Now that's an 11 and a third innings. Well, if you can continually get ahead of the hitters, we've all seen it on a consistent basis. You can get them to chase things, pitches out of the strike zone like that. He got that slider a little bit off the corner, and he got the ground ball right to the second baseman. Two down as Nishioka makes the play again. Two down, and here is Gene Mon Park, the shortstop, who made such a fine play on the ground ball hit by Tamura in the first half of this inning. Park, the Korean shortstop, 
with the Samsung Lions and they, they, they say the Samsung Lions are probably the number one team in Korea. They win the more championships than than anybody else They're in the uh, the city of uh, Daegu and uh, Jinmon Park last year had seven homers 44 RBIs 249 average so he was a glove man Joe they got the glove man in there at shortstop this is old time baseball here this is not a uh, you know Miguel Tejada Alex Rodriguez kind of a shortstop this is a guy this is more the Ozzy Smith kind of a shortstop give me some D I think Ozzy would agree with you on the D but Ozzy said he could hit too well he I'm just telling you what he yeah. told me I know I'm not yeah. Well, and he, and he was right. Oh, but okay. not when he played in San Diego. <laughs> not when he played here. Not in this in this city, right? <laughs> Three balls and a strike to Jin Mon Park. In Sung Cho, the catcher would be next. Two down, nobody on. No score in the game. Man. Right there in the corner at the knees. Three and two. Man. A little different there. You can see Uihara did not even give in on a 3 1 pitch. He hit the outside corner knee high. And this one he blows right by him. His second strikeout. Three up and three down. On to the third inning. Satozaki coming up for Japan. Nothing, nothing. Back in San Diego, the World Baseball Classic. Earlier today, Cuba upset the Dominican Republic. Cuba is in the final. Now, Japan and Korea. No score. We go to the third inning. I'm John Miller, along with Joe Morgan. We're joined by our colleagues, Peter Gammons, down by the Korean dugout. And Jose Moda down by Japan's dugout. And uh, by you. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, can, how much longer can Korea keep this thing going? They've won six in a row, including two against Japan. And the slider from Jay So in there for a strike to Tomoya Satozaki. Satozaki hitting eighth in the order for Sadaharu O's Team Japan. Kawasaki, the shortstop on deck. Back to the screen and it is 0 2. And this is the one thing that we're seeing this pattern develop from both pitchers is getting the hitters behind 0 and 2 early in the count. I mean, the first two pitches for strikes, then it gives them a lot of room for margin for error if they want to try to get them to chase pitches. 0 and 2 the count. And back over the screen, still 0 and 2. Satozaki, who played for Bobby Valentine's Chibalote Marines, 303 average, 10 homers last year. No score, top of the third. So we'll try it again. That was hit hard, but to the shortstop, Park. Gene Mon Park throws him out. He looks like the wrong guy to hit it to. One down. In game two on Wednesday in Anaheim. That was the the base hit, and the the runner, Iwamura, came up lame halfway home and got thrown out on a great throw. And then Jung Bong Lee got the two run single, and then finally O oh got the final strikeout. Ichiro unhappy. Jay So planted the Korean flag on the mound there, much to the chagrin and apparent irritation of the Japanese team. Little knowing, I mean, Jap Japan, according to Sadaharu O, oh, they, they felt they, they were out of it. But they have risen from the ashes. He was uh, effusive with his thanks to the uh, outstanding strong game played by Team Mexico and in, in beating Team USA Thursday. And uh, when they won that ball game to move into the finals or into the semifinals, the government waived the two year mandatory military service requirement. Eleven players eligible for that. There's a ball down the right field line into the corner. That's going to bounce up against that angled wall. Kawasaki heading for second. A throw in by Jin Young Lee. And a double for Kawasaki. Well, let's take a look at this pitch. It's supposed to be down and in. He doesn't quite get it down and it moves over the plate a little bit. And the one thing I've mentioned is that they handle the ball inside well because they use their hands. And you can see that very similar to each row, the, the type of swing that they have. And that's the using the upper body and just using their hands to roll over on the ball inside. So Kawasaki has got speed. He stole 21 bases last year at second. And now here is the leadoff man, Aoki. Aoki, who had 202 hits last year. In his rookie season, he was only the second player in uh, Japan League history 
They got the Central League and the Pacific League. The only other player ever to have, have had a 200 hit season in Japanese baseball was Ichiro. And uh, Aoki in his rookie season had 202 last year. He won the Rookie of the Year award, hit 344 for the Yakult Swallows. And the interesting thing is that Ichiro only did it once, and he did it in his first full year in the league as well. So Aoki, who hit one back to the pitcher's first time, and that one misses from Jay So down and away. 3 0 oh with Nishioka on deck. Now, this guy, Aoki, no pretense of power, only three home runs last year in 588 at bats. He is now two for three in this tournament. So he has been mostly sitting. This is his first start. Shows butt, takes low. Look at that. A four pitch walk to uh, Aoki from So. So two men out, one man out, and a threat here. And the batter will be Nishioka, the second baseman. Well, as they talk it over at the mound, let's go down near the Korean dugout. And our colleague, here's Peter Gammons. Well, we, John, you were talking about being able to get out of the military service obligation. It's really good for it. some of the players that have been here in America, like Sonny Kim and Hesop Troy, who haven't gone back to their native country for a few years because they didn't want to have to go into the military. But my favorite is Sung Hoon Young. He wasn't even on the team when this when the series started. But when regular third baseman Don Don Kim got hurt young was added to the team well he was supposed to be starting his military service this week Korea won the second round and he's out of his military obligation wow. it's great to be a utility infielder <laughs> timing is everything in life all right so they've had the discussion at the mound two men on and here is Nishioka one of the uh, top hitters for Team Japan Dong Yol Sun the pitching coach for the uh, the Koreans visited at the mound there with Jay So now Nishioka stands in. he struck out his first time two men on one man out the pickoff to second safely back is Kawasaki and John some of the players were already exempt like Chan Ho Pak he was already exempt because they had won you know an international tournament and they'd won the gold medal so some of the guys were already excused from military service that's a strike now to Nishioka they have some kind of a, a formula and for people who you know, do great things in, in other fields athletics or the arts music that brings a uh, special recognition favorably to the, uh, the, the country then they uh, can have their military obligation uh, removed In the past, the government has exempted Olympic medalists and Asian Games gold medalists from military obligations. Two men on, one man out, no score in the game. This is where Korea has not been allowing anybody to get a hit. Team USA, name a team, nobody's been able to get hits in spots like this. Runners in scoring position. But this is the first time we've seen him really struggle. You know, he walked Aoki and now he is struggling to throw strikes to Nishioka. Kawasaki hit the double and he's hardly been in the strike zone since. That's a liner to third. Back over to first. It's a double play. And the inning is over. Wow. With Ichiro on deck, a line shot. And just like that, so is out of a jam. World Baseball Classic. The World Baseball Classic. We are in San Diego. No score as we go to the last half of the third inning. And from high above Petco Park, these views courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear Forterra tires featuring silent armor technology. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. Peter Gammons and Jose Mota are here with us as well. Earlier today, Cuba defeated the Dominican Republic 3 to 1, back of Yadel Marti and Pedro Luis Lasso now Korea trying to extend its perfection the only unbeaten team in the tournament the batter the eighth place hitter in Sung Cho the Korean catcher followed by Min Jae Kim and then the leadoff man Byung Yu Lee is uh, MJ Kim on deck 
No score in the game. Uehara for Japan, the pitcher. And a fastball, strike three call. Well, let's look at, take a look at what has become a staple of the Korean team. I mean, they make all the plays. Now, watch the runners. Oh, he breaks the first. Now he comes to first base, and that makes it an easier play for the third baseman. Because if he has to go to second, watch, you'll see he has to hit this guy on the move. And he didn't want to do that. And it's an easier throw to a stationary target at first base. Ichiro in right field. And uh, Min Jae Kim is retired on one pitch out number two. Now watch the runners and watch the defensive players. What you'll see here is when he gets he comes up he catches it and it's easier to go to first base because he's stationary than to have to hit a moving target with the second baseman coming to cover. Now by the same token Joe what about that kind of base running. Well the both base runners were going to be caught but the guy at first base it's it's really inexcusable for the first baseman to be able to beat him back to the bag. So two down. Here's the leadoff man, Byung Yu Lee, the left fielder. He flied out to shallow left his first time. Two down, nobody on, and Uehara throwing strikes as he almost always does. He got to be very good friends with Roger Clemens back in 2002 when Clemens came over with a <laughs> group of all stars from the major leagues. And you can see there, Uihara thought he had a strikeout. Ed Hickox, the plate umpire, thought otherwise. One and two the count. In the dirt. And two and two. That doesn't bode well later on. Satozaki better stay behind the plate and apologize. <laughs> There's nothing worse than to show an umpire up, and he both he and Uihara had started off the field. Two down bases empty in the third inning. No score in the game. Korea has only one hit against Uehara. At third base, Imai. And the inning is over. That's eight in a row retired by Uehara. Ichiro coming up when we go to the fourth. No score. All right, and it was a uh, quite a quite a shock, I'm sure, to uh, the. The Dominican fans and fans of Major League Baseball who knew just how talented that Dominican team was. The championship game, Cuba versus the winner of this game. Here's Ichiro who singled his first time, and Jay So throws him a strike call on its own one. Not only did he single, John, he stole a base on the very first pitch, trying to get something started because he knows it's going to be difficult to score. The team Japan has scored only three runs. In the first two games against South Korea, I mean, nobody been scoring against uh, Korea anyway. They have a 1.33 team ERA in this tournament, and that's off the outside again. Two and one the count to Ichiro with Machunaka the cleanup hitter on deck, and then Tamura hitting fifth. No yeah. runs, two hits for Japan. No runs, one hit, uh, one hit for Korea. Two and one the count. Oh, now he stops in mid motion. And the one thing you notice when you watch each row hit is he's always kind of pulling toward first base, but he keeps his bat back, and you'll see a lot of the hitters doing that in this series. And that's a foul that will go back out of play. Well, Ichiro is the uh, the guy who's drawing a lot of uh, the heat from the Korean fans in this tournament because of a quote that that he made before the tournament ever started. About how Japan would do against South Korea. That's a foul off to the right and into the Korean dugout. Two balls and two strikes. Not only will we win, but also we'll make Japanese baseball fans feel that they saw a truly great game. I want to make Korea and Chinese Taipei see that they will not be able to beat Japan in the next 30 years. Over the mound. There's the pickup. There's the throw, but too late. Ichiro. We see him do that, what, 40, 50 times a year in the major leagues, Joe. And the reason he can do it, John, is as I said, he's, he's moving toward first base when he swings. He's already on the move. So it's a lot different than a lot of other left-handed hitters. Watch his body. Watch where his body ends up. He's already down the line. Look at that. He's three steps down the line by the time he finishes. Now watch this. Watch where he is. Look at that. He's already down the line when he 
finishes his swing. And that's why he gets so many infield hits. And a nice play, but, I mean, when he's running, you're just not going to be able to make the play on him. Ichiro, who stole, as Joe just mentioned, on the first pitch after he singled in the first inning. This time, Jay So makes the throw to first was as Matsunaka comes up. Matsunaka, the designated hitter for Team Japan. No score. Ichiro again back to the bag. And I, I find it interesting that Sadahara O put him in the third slot because, as I said before, he is a good hitter with runners in scoring position. But you do not, you can also lead from the third spot. You don't have to be the leadoff hitter to make things happen. Well, I mean, Ichiro, I mean, he's a, he's a pretty good leadoff man because he makes things happen. He starts things. He makes pitchers uneasy and rattles the defense a little bit. But he's also a great clutch hitter. Yeah. He's just a good hitter all the way around. One ball, no strikes, and Matsunaka takes the ball way outside. Two and oh, the count. Well, I think Ichiro is bothering him at first base. He knew that he, he knows that he took off on his first pitch the last time at first base. Now he's concentrating on holding him. And anytime you give a lot of your concentration to the runner at first base, you're losing some of that concentration that you need to have for the hitter. Three and oh. Well, there we go. So the just the threat of the speed, perhaps causing the yes. Lapse in concentration here for Jay So. You know, you do not always have to steal the base to have an effect on the pitcher. If the threat can be just as important because he's going to end up throwing a lot of fastballs to the next hitter. Ichiro goes on 3 0. Oh, that's a strike. And he steals another one. And that was a very smart play by Ichiro. And the reason I say that is now he's concentrating strictly on throwing a strike. He was not concentrating on Ichiro. So he's not giving him any thoughts at first base and you see Ichiro got a great jump this time a much better jump than he had his first at bat in the first inning when he stole second base so Ichiro with his fourth steal in the tournament two of them have come tonight we're in the fourth inning no score three and one to Matsunaka nobody out and a foul back out of play three and two the count now well Matsunaka's job now of course is to pull the ball and advance Ichiro to third at worst with a productive out and they've got to do that a better job of that especially against the Koreans three and two the count in the fourth Tamura a right handed hitter on deck Matsunaka who he's a power hitter but he has not struck out in this tournament and he, he got the uh, off speed pitch there that's playable and uh, caught Bamho Lee so Matsunaka could not advance the runner. And you can see, you know, what this game means. He was so upset with himself. You know, he smashed the head of the bat into the ground, but he had a pitch to hit on three and one, and he could not get the job done. And he comes back and so makes a good pitch, and he pops it up on the left side. You know, the deeper we go into this tournament, as the games get bigger and bigger, especially this last week, it seems like a, a common theme has been power hitters are not getting it done. They, they're the guys that are being beaten down by the opposing pitchers. This time Matsunaka earlier today it was the, the sluggers like pool holes and Ortiz Beltre with the, the Dominican. We saw it with Team USA the other night. Here is Tamura runner still at second high in the air left field pretty deep still going back now under it and that one Young Yu Lee now had Ichiro been at third base this would be a one to nothing game right now on that same fly ball. Well we talked about the fact that this is a big ballpark in most parks in Japan that's a home run but this ballpark here the ball doesn't carry well the air is a little heavy here tonight and he may have hit that ball well enough to get out of most ballparks but not here. Yeah the uh, and it looks like the wind blowing in from left field too. What makes it even yeah. worse. I mean this is the ballpark where the Padres play Complain. and their own hitters are leading the, uh, the the complaints about hitting here. That one is into center field and there is Lee. Jumbum Lee has it. Getting the hit with a runner in scoring position almost impossible against Korea. It's the World Baseball Classic. 
presented by Taco Bell. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan. Peter Gammons, Jose Moto with us. And we're at Petco Park in San Diego where already today Team Cuba defeated the mighty Dominican Republic. Offensive juggernaut three to one. They shut them down. And they're in the final. Now can Japan turn the table on Korea the unbeaten team from South Korea that ball is belted down the left field line into the corner that one is going foul and did he catch it yes he did what a play by Tamura in the left field corner he disappeared from our view for a moment and the left field line umpire Tom Hallian uh, belatedly gave us the call when he saw that he came up out of there with it what a play but I thought this ball had a chance of going out because it's right down the line and anything right down the line obviously that's the shortest distances in these ballpark this ballpark and he thought he had a chance but then it started to die as you said the winds blowing in and I think it not only knocked it down but it a lot caused it to hook foul even more. Oh man he's lucky he's not being carried off on a stretcher down there. One down and here is Sung Yap Lee the great slugger for the Koreans he struck out his first time. Sung Yap Lee we had just mentioned how he had only struck out twice in the tournament when he struck out against Uehara Ichiro and that is out number two so they hit the ball well here but into two outs. Well I talked about the fact that he he's similar in his approach to Ichiro except he has more power. And watch where he starts his hands like each row. Now he strides forward and watch he ends up with the high kick like each row and he uses his hands very well. He does not drive as much with his lower body but he uses his upper body very well. So Sung Yap Lee retired two down and here is the cleanup hitter. He stopped Choi. Fastball to strike to the outside. Choi 15 homers as a, a, a part time player for the Dodgers last year in the major leagues. He grounded out the first in the first tonight. No score, fourth inning, just off the outside. And it's a ball and a strike. Well, you talk about that leg kick, and Sadaharu Oh, the manager of Team Japan, had a, a classic stance that he called the Flamingo stance. That's a foul out of play, which he developed because he had a hitch in his swing, couldn't hit an off speed pitch. He worked with his batting coach, and they used two Japanese disciplines. The martial art Aikido and the art of the, the samurai swordsman and uh, doing those two things he was able to adjust for that that hitch in his swing center field Aoki and the ball just does not go anywhere in this yard a pitcher's heaven to the fifth inning now no score. Here comes Team Japan. No score in the game. Top of the fifth inning. Jay So, the Team Korea, and that's the ball up and away. Ogasawara flying out deep to right his first time. He finished second in the Pacific League in Japan last year with 37 home runs. Guts, Ogasawara of the Fighters. Left center field. There is Lee. Let's take a look at Jay Young So and how he has been able to get these hitters out he's been keeping the ball down mostly using his fastball his sinker using a splitter another splitter and a little looks like a little slide piece so he's but all the, the real key is all of those pitches are down the team ERA for the tournament now for team Korea one point two four. And there's ball one to Tomoya Satozaki, the catcher, the eighth place hitter for Team Japan. He grounded a short his first time. No score, fifth inning. That's a called strike on the inside. One ball and one strike. Korea, commonly known here in, in the United States as South Korea. The Republic of Korea is the actual name of the country. And they asked to be simply called Korea in this tournament. In right center, caught by Jung Bong Lee, and there are two men down. Satozaki is gone. Two down, nobody on. 
In the fifth inning, the ninth place hitter now, Kawasaki, will come up. He hit a double with one out in the third inning. Team Japan 0 for 5 in its at bats with runners in scoring position, which we define as a runner at second or third or, or both. And against Korea now in this tournament, there have only been five hits in 48 such at bats for the whole tournament. I mean, everything that they do is just so great in the clutch. And in the tournament such as this, that's how you win. One strike to count. And that's a ball in the dirt. One ball, one strike to Kawasaki, the leadoff man. Aoki would be next. In the bullpen, there is activity. The right-hander, we've seen him a lot in the major leagues, Byung Hyun Kim. And the left-hander is, uh, there's a foul on the third base side. June, the left-hander, by the way, out there warming up for Team Korea in the bullpen. Young Hyun Kim, of course, uh, been in the big leagues with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Was in the World Series with Arizona in 2001. Been with the Red Sox. Now with Colorado at second base. And there is Kim. And that is the inning. Now to the last of the fifth inning. It is still scored. Here's Peter Gammons with it. Super Bowl MVP, Heinz Ward. We'll talk about that when we come back. The World Baseball Classic, we're in San Diego. Semifinal game, Japan and Korea. The powers from Asia. No score into the last of the fifth inning. The winner will move on. The loser will be all done. Peter Gammons is standing by down near the Korean dugout with Super Bowl MVP, Heinz Ward. Peter? Heinz. Having been born in Seoul, do you have any sort of feeling, twinge of nationalistic pride watching this? Yes, I do. I mean, it's kind of, it's like hopping on a bandwagon. I mean, for the Korean team to come out here and showcase their talents amongst some of the greatest baseball players throughout the whole world, uh, to be here in the semifinals, it's, uh, it's just a, it's a great accomplishment for the, for the whole Korean community. Now, when you went in the clubhouse before the game, did any of them ask you about what it's like to be a champion? Uh, I, I became, uh, I talked to uh, Park, and Channel Park, and uh, he showed me around and introduced me to a lot of players. And as much as I was nervous of meeting those guys, I was a big fan of them, and I seen them playing against Japan earlier during, during the week. But those guys are a huge supporter of mine. So it's just great that, uh, that the Korean community showed their support, and I can come out here and show my support for them. Are you curious about what kind of reception you're going to get when you go back to Korea for the first time in April? Uh, a little bit, but just being here and, and seeing the, all the Korean community, the way they support their athletics, uh, is just wow. I mean, that's what's so great about the this baseball tournament is seeing all the different coaches come around and show their support for their team. And you know, I kind of expect the kind of the same way when I head back over to Korea in April. Heinz, thank you very much. Oh, no problem. Back to you, John. Heinz Ward, who caught a long touchdown pass in the Super Bowl out of the University of Georgia. And uh, I like how you put it, though, Joey. You know, kind of getting on the bandwagon. <laughs> and when teams win, you certainly, they, they get your attention. Well, a lot of people got on the Pittsburgh Steeler bandwagon <laughs> down the stretch <laughs> and for the Super Bowl. Yeah, even in October, I knew they were going to win it. <laughs> One down. As uh, Jin Young Lee has flied out to the big part of the yard. And here is uh, Bum Ho Lee, the third baseman, hitting sixth in the order, grounded out to second his first time. And then that splitter, he went around with it. Strike three. The plate up by Ed Hickox made the call himself without appealing to the first base umpire. Well, you can see that he wasn't able to stop his swing. You can see Bum Ho Lee is completely fooled by the pitch and he can't stop. He thought he made it. He thought he did stop it, but not in time. Jin Man Park, the shortstop, struck out his first time. Two down, nobody on in the fifth inning. The Japan bullpen is busy right now, but I mean Uehara is is rolling, and I think Joe, th this ballpark is probably giving him a, an extra jolt of confidence. 
Well, they pitch well the entire classic, as you said, but this ballpark fits perfectly for their style of pitching and their style of play. So they're going to be tough to beat. Well, both of these teams, because I mean, Uhara is throwing the Uihara is throwing the ball very well, also. And Slattery bluffed the bunt, did Jin Man Park, and the count of two and one. The catcher, the eighth place hitter, In Sung Cho, would be next. Only one hit for Korea against Uehara. And the high hard one, a foul tip into the glove of catcher Satozaki. Two and two the count. It's interesting because I thought he was going to use the high fastball a lot more earlier in the ball game, but he has really just used it when he needed a strike. I mean, he wanted someone to go up and out of the strike zone. They will seem to chase the high fastball. When they see all these splitters and sliders right, and everything exactly. else. So when you see a fastball, you want to hit it. <laughs> Don't let it go by. But he uses that against him, too. Yeah, he? It, well, that's what I mean. He's, he's a smart pitcher. Shimizu, the right handed. Fujita, the left handed, up in the bullpen. And that's a base hit. Only the second hit for Korea. Uehara had retired 13 in a row since Jung Bong Lee hit a double back in the first inning. Well, it's a fastball, but this one is down. He didn't get it up. And a good job of hitting by Jin Men Park. I mean, right back through the middle. And you can see Uihara does not have time to react. But now, with Park aboard, here is In Sung Cho, the catcher, the eighth place hitter. Nothing to nothing, last of the fifth inning. And this game. It has a lot of similarities to that ball game they played Wednesday in Anaheim. That game was scoreless all the way up until the eighth inning. Center field, but again, that's the, the comfort zone for a pitcher. Make him hit it out there and uh, head to the dugout. Cho is retired. Now to the sixth inning, the top of the order. Aoki, Nishioka, and Ichiro coming up. This telecast of the World Baseball Classic, presented by Taco Bell, is brought to you by Budweiser. Bright, crisp, clean, pure. This is Budweiser. This is beer. And Intel, makers of Centrino Duo Mobile Technology. Japan nothing, Korea nothing. Top of the sixth inning, the World Baseball Classic. Much at stake. This is an elimination game. And from above Petco Park in San Diego, courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear for Terra tires featuring silent armor technology. Here's Aoki, the leadoff man for Team Japan, getting ready to bat against a new pitcher. Despite five shutout innings from Jay So, the manager in Shik Kim goes to his bullpen. You've got a lefty, a switch hitter, and two more lefties after that. So he's bringing in the left hander here. Uh, Byung Du Jun, a relief pitcher of the KIA Tigers in the Korean League. Three and two with a 3.00 ERA. He's the youngest player on the Korean team. A new third baseman is in as well. Sung Hoon Jung. And there's ball one to Aoki. Well, you start to get the feeling like in the first game, Bartolo Colon was pitching and no one was going to score until he came out of the ball game. And you're getting the same feeling here from Jay Young So they were going to not going to score off of him as well. And there's one away. So Aoki is now 0 for 2 with a walk. That will bring up Nishioka for Sadaharu O's Team Japan. Let's go down to Jose Moto in the Japan dugout. Speaking of Sadaharu O, the manager for Japan told me before the game that it was important. He felt like we need to score first. And right now, in between innings, one thing I noticed that he did is, Joe, he was telling the guys, we got to get line drives, swing down. It is a big ballpark. They're getting a hold of that now. Here's Nishioka, the switch hitter. He struck out and lined hard into a double play. Well, I, I agree with the line drive part of it because this is a big ballpark. I don't know about swinging down, but hit line drive. And that's a ball too low from June, who's only 21 years old. But I would never argue with Sadahara O oh, about hitting. Osan. Showing butt taking a strike is Nishioka. He's a guy like Ichiro can make things happen when he gets on base. He's a base dealer. And they'd like to see him get on base. He's been kept off the bases tonight. 
at the knees. Strike two call. Two and two the count. You know, I'm wondering, in Shik Kim, the manager for Korea, you know, the, the whole Japanese lineup has seen so now two at bats. Maybe just wants to give him a different look and get that lefty in there in the most favorable time. And that is out number two as Min Jae Kim, the second baseman, throws out his opposite number, the Japan second baseman, Nishioka, two down. Well, what you do is buy yourself a little more time, plus you have Ichiro coming up. Left-handers do not normally bother him, but maybe he figures he could keep him for still in the base. But as you said, this is probably the perfect time to bring in a left-hander in this situation with a nothing-to-nothing -nothing ball game. Two down, nobody on. Ichiro is two for two in the game. He is single to right, and he has had an infield single and has stolen a base. In fact, he's stolen two bases. Ichiro has two of Team Japan's three hits. He's two for two. You just saw that number. The rest of the team has had one hit in 17 at bats. Jin, the new pitcher here, June, that is, in his third WBC appearance. He has not allowed a run or a hit. Well, we get that low strike call now. And Ichiro, as was the case with Aoki, looks a little surprised by that call. Well, let's take a look at K's own. And Ichiro was right. Fastball is too high. One and two. Ichiro for the tournament now is hitting 346 with his two hits tonight. That's just about where you figure him to, to be when the Major League season ends. Pass the mound. There's Pac behind second. In the dirt. Picked by Lee. And the inning is over. Ichiro retired for the first time. June gets it done. We go to the last of the sixth inning. It is still nothing to nothing. Uehara. And that's a foul ball. Just barely foul off the bat of Min Jae Kim. The ninth place hitter for Korea. Who flied out to right his first time. He'll be followed by the leadoff man byung Lee. And then uh, Jung Bon Lee. The second place hitter due up third in the inning. No score in the game. No runs. Three hits for Team Japan. No runs. Two hits for Korea. One strike to count. Kawasaki. And that is out number one. That was the 65th pitch thrown by Uehara. And under the World Baseball Classic rules, he's eligible to throw as many as 95. Final out today, Pedro Lasso in relief. And that was ruled a swinging strike three on a slider from uh, Soriano and Cuba with the big upset over the, the mighty Dominican Republic moves into the championship game. Eastern at 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock Pacific, Monday night from here in San Diego. Young Yu Lee, the leadoff man, has flied to shallow left and grounded out to third. The World Baseball Classic presented by Taco Bell. We'll see you here Monday night. Japan bullpen is busy. Nice fastball right at the knees on the outside edge. 0 and 2. And a splitter in the dirt for the strikeout. And the catcher, Satozaki, throws him out. That is out number two. He seems like he's getting better, Joe, as the night wears on. Well, as I said, we may not have anyone score until they change all both pitchers. Two down. Because they're both. Jae Young So pitched very, very well, and Uihara is pitching just as well, if not better. And the Dodger fans had to be happy about seeing uh, So pitch so well. They're hoping he'll be a major addition to their staff this year. Acquired from the Mets. Well, the new uh, general manager there for the Dodgers, Ned Coletti. One strike to count to Lee. On the fists, foul back to the screen. Jun Bum Lee had a double in the first inning and hit one deep down the left field line. It was caught in the corner on a spectacular play by Tamura, the left fielder for Japan. He probably hit the ball better than anybody in Korea against Uehara tonight. Very defensive swing there with a two strike count but he fought it off 0 and 2 the count. And he had the big hit. That drove in the two runs that were the winning runs in the. 
game in Anaheim on Wednesday when they won that ball game two to one. Knocked in the two runs in the eighth inning of that game. Hugging the line at third, that was a good thing. Emai throws him out. Jun Bom Lee is retired. It was a nine pitch inning for Uehara. He's been superb. On to the seventh. Matsunaka, the power hitter, coming up. Petco Park in San Diego. It's the World Baseball Classic presented by Taco Bell. No score. Semifinal game. Japan and Korea. The winner moves into the championship game Monday night against Cuba. Here's the cleanup hitter for Japan. Matsunaka, left handed hitter. 46 home runs last year in the Japanese leagues, and he takes a strike from uh, Jun, the left handed reliever, who may be facing his final hitter here with some right handers coming up next. That's a strike call to the outside, and it is 0 2. But so far, he's doing exactly what he's been asked to do, and that is to cut, come in and shut down the left handers that were at the top of the order. And the ball outside. That was a 91 mile an hour fastball, but it had a little cutting action on it. One and two. The youngest player on the Korean roster. That's down the right field line. That's going to be a base hit. Up against the wall. In after it, Jin Young Lee. Matsunaka digging for second, and he's got a double. Well, he made a mistake. He got the fastball inside. And a good job of hitting by Nats Matsunaka. Well, he's got two strikes. And you can see it. Well, they want to go inside. They want it down, and he gets it up, but it's still inside. It's not as bad a pitch as it looked. Maybe the location he called for was the wrong location. But a good job of hitting there by Matsunaka. And we're going to get the pitching change now with a couple of right handed hitters Tamura and Imai coming up. Byung Hyun Kim coming in no score. Team Korea they've been the team of the tournament so far but they won't get any extra points for that tonight if they lose tonight despite their spotless record up to now they'll be eliminated. There's Byung Hyun Kim. Many years in the major leagues, currently with the Colorado Rockies. Got a runner at second and nobody out. Tamura showing bunt. And the first baseman charging hard, Sung Yap Lee. The third baseman, Sung Hoon Jung, is trying to lay back for a possible play on the runner. Matsunaka. We saw Matsunaka run, Joe. It had to be a pretty good bucket. He didn't look that fast. <laughs> And that's a foul. Kim, you know, he's unfortunately for Kim, because it was such a big stage, he's probably best remembered for those home runs he gave up at Yankee Stadium in consecutive nights in the 2001 World Series. Uh, Tino Martinez, a two run shot in the ninth inning one night to tie the game. And Scott Brocious did the same thing the next night. Two of the most amazing home runs ever seen in World Series play. But truth be told, Kim had had a great string of success as a reliever with the Arizona Diamondbacks and remember they still won the championship they, they won it all and he was one of the top relievers in the National League there for a few years he got a that submarine style delivery throws that pitch that kind of rises and got that that kind of rising slider too and he caused a lot of trouble for a lot of hitters in the major leagues and he uh, he went to the Red Sox for a while and fell in disfavor with Colorado last year as both a starter and a reliever. The funny thing was he had great success as a reliever there for a time but he always wanted to start because he was a starter in Korea. Did he bunt. Yeah the first base umpire Guccione on appeal says yeah you butted at it. But well, not only is he tough to hit he's tough to bunt as well. And you can see. Tamora is still looking down to see if they want him to bunt. But he definitely chased this pitch. But it's moving away from him. You can see you got to pull the bat back before the ball passes your bat. You got to pull it back before you actually bunt at it. <laughs> well, it looks like he's going to bunt with two strikes. Two and two the count. Now he brings the bat back and swings it a real bad one. 
Well, a smart pitch there by BK Kim because. You know, he looked like he might have wanted he, he squared around like he was going to bunt. And in that case, you throw a fastball. But they were aware that he wasn't going to throw it, wasn't going to bunt. So he swings at the breaking ball off the plate. Uh, Sadaharu O comes out with an interpreter. The interpreter talk to the plate umpire, Ed Hickox. And I guess he's going to look like he's making a switch. Out of the dugout for Team Japan is Kosuke. Fukudome. Fukudome the, had been the regular center fielder until tonight. They put in uh, the, the speedier, higher average hitter, Aoki. And Fukudome is going to come in as a pinch hitter here for Imai, the right handed hitting third baseman. So Osan seems to like the matchup against Kim with the left handed hitter a little bit better. Well, I think your left hander definitely has a better shot, but it's not easy for a left hander to pick the ball up. The reason that Tim is difficult. Kim is difficult to hit is because you're normally used to picking the ball up out of here. So what happens you're out of here. But when you drop down you're looking for it from a different spot and there's a lot of area between here and there and all of a sudden you don't find the ball as quickly as you'd like and before you know it it's on top of you. So here is Fukudome with another lefty Ogasawara on deck. Fukudome is a not hit in this tournament. It's a ball inside from Kim. Japan just like everybody else that Korea has played in this tournament not hitting in the clutch with runners in scoring position 0 for 6 tonight. The whole field in the tournament is 5 for 49 in these at bats against Korea over the outside corner for a strike one ball and one strike Fukudome with the Chunichi Dragons last year hit 328 with 28 homers and you can see the movement that Kim has on his fastball I mean it really tails away. Nice frame job there by the catcher. That ball is hammered way back into right field. That ball is gone. A two run homer for the pinch hitter, Fukudome. After slumping all through the tournament, he launches one in the seventh inning. And Team Japan, having already risen from the ashes to stay alive in this tournament, has now taken a two nothing lead over there. Arch rivals from Korea. How about that managing job by Sadahara O? He's not just another great hitter. Smart move there. Even after he had benched Fukudome, and he brings him in in a clutch situation, and he delivers for him. And Fukudome had 103 RBIs last year, so you know he's an RBI man, and, and Osan must have figured, Joe, hey, this guy is a, a proven. RBI man proven in the clutch. Let's let's see what he can do here. And once again, Kim finds himself in a bad position. And he has pitched well in this classic. Yeah, he may have. Oh. Right after the homer, he drills Ogasawara. And Ogasawara unhappy with him. Kim comes walking in toward home plate as Ogasawara gave him some uh, some harsh looks, but now he heads over to first baseman he's limping up the line. Well the umpire warns both dugouts as well. And you see a fastball right in the middle of the plate. We showed you the one before that was moving away. This one does not move. It's kind of a straight fastball and it doesn't move. It doesn't sink. It just stays there and Fukudome hits it out of the ballpark. He says this park is not too big for him. I mean as soon as he hit that one you knew it was gone. There you see Sadaharo up leading the cheers. He said that's just the way I used to hit him. Yeah. I mean and just as you said as soon as he hit it you knew it was gone. Osan as soon as he hit it was up out yeah. of the dugout. There's a bunt foul by Sakdozaki. The catcher he's 0 for 2. Well Kim he may have had some. Uh, Flashbacks there as Fukudome was running the bases. He may have uh, interspersed some some bad memories of Tino Martinez running the bases, another left-handed slugger who hit that big one in the ninth inning in Game Four in the World Series in 2001 against Kim at Yankee Stadium. Showing bunt there was Sakuzaki, but the throw went to first base. But I mean, Kim made a bad mistake. That he just grooved that pitch. Well, the there. ball didn't move, John. It 
The other pitch pitches he was throwing were sinking and moving away from the left hander but that one did not move at all. Pretty much straight fastball. In the dirt and away from the catcher and over to second base goes guts Ogawasara. Two to nothing Japan leading Korea in the seventh inning only the second time in this entire tournament that team Korea has trailed in a game. The other time of course was against Japan in Tokyo in uh, the third game of the tournament back on March the 5th. They were down two to one all the way up into the eighth inning when they came from behind and won it anyway. Satozaki now with a runner at second base. We'll try and drive him in. Right in there with a fastball one and two the count now. In Japan. It's a nearly two o'clock. Sunday afternoon. And in Korea. The same the same thing. That ball is hit deep in the left center field. That ball is really crushed. It is way back there and up against and over the wall. An automatic double. But because he had gone to second on the wild pitch, Ogasawara scores on the double by Satozaki. Looked like he got a hanging slider, and he knew just what to do with it. And bad memories for Byung Hyun Kim revisited here. And they have hit him hard in this inning. Well, again, he hangs a breaking ball. The other one was a straight fastball that didn't move. But look at this one. It doesn't break very much. It just kind of slides a little bit. And a nice bat flip there. But he doesn't get it out of the ballpark. So in Sheik Kim is going to make the pitching change. And uh, perhaps the best revenge the man who got a hit by the pitch after the homer he has just scored the third run we'll be back I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan along with Peter Gammons and Jose Mota we are at Petco Park in San Diego and now Team Japan not only has the lead they've got a three run lead all of the runs scoring here in the seventh inning and all scoring after Byung Hyun Kim came into the game be sure to watch your teams out of market games live during the Major League Baseball season from anywhere in the world. That's right, live Major League Baseball right on your desktop or your laptop. Go to ESPN.com and search for MLB.tv. Sign up today. Don't miss a pitch all season long. And they've got the, the park in the park out there beyond center field here at Petco Park. As Jun Kyun Bong, formerly with the Atlanta Braves, comes in from the Korean bullpen. He was with the Cincinnati Reds last year, but spent the season on the disabled list. So, you know, John, going back to that booming home run hit by Fukudome that put Japan ahead, that very next pitch, Byung Hyun Kim drilled Ogasawara. I mean, that has really turned into a, something that has really hurt them. That's well, a strike on the outside. Well, because of his delivery, you almost have to be trying to hit a left-handed hitter to hit him because his ball automatically tails away from the left-handed hitter, and he had to throw it so far inside or throw a straight one that wouldn't move, and he was able to hit him. So sort of in a, in a fit of peak. Deflected by Bong over to the second baseman, Kim, and he throws out Kawasaki. Give the pitcher an assist on that play, but Satozaki moves over to third base for Japan. That ball might have scooted through the middle had Bong not been able to get a glove on it. And there is Satozaki at third base now after the, the ground out by Kawasaki. And now Sadaharu O comes out again. Aoki do up, but maybe another pinch hitter. We'll see. But Joe, we're talking about that hit by pitch after the home run. Let's take a look at what you're talking about here. Well, watch it. Let's take a look at. Guts, he's off the plate. See, he's way off the plate. Look how far this ball is off the plate. I mean, this ball is like three feet off the plate. I mean, it's way inside. Look at that. It's almost behind him, and he steps into it. And then he ends up with a runner at first. And then Satozaki hits a double. 
kind of flips his bat but he knows it's a base hit and they score another run so now they have a three run lead and we have another pitching change but the point being you know yeah. getting some revenge or taking it out of his own frustration of the next hitter and he may have helped Japan get an even bigger inning as a result of it we've got a pinch hitter Miyamoto and a new pitcher coming in for Korea Min Han Son will be right back. The World Baseball Classic from San Diego and the aerial coverage courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company and its fleet of airships reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear for Terra tires featuring silent armor technology. I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan along with Peter Gannon and Jose Mota down by the uh, the two dugouts and Korea. They've done everything well. They have surprised the baseball world but suddenly after all of this could the magic have run out they are down three to nothing there's a runner at third two down and there is Min Han Son of the Lotte Giants in the Korean League he was 18 and seven last year as a starting pitcher primarily he comes on as the fourth pitcher of this inning and he's facing the pinch hitter Miyamoto that's a ball too high. Stone has been in two games, both as a starter and is 2 0 oh in the tournament, a 1.29 ERA. Shinya Miyamoto, the pinch hitter, batting for Aoki. That is into left field, a base hit. Satozaki is in to score. Now it is a four run inning. Three of the runs charged to the record of Byung Hyun Kim. Well this is what Japan has been waiting for you know, in an explosion because they have not been able to beat Korea they lost three to two and two to one. Come kind of off speed pitch it wasn't a fastball. And Miyamoto just grinds it through the left side for a base hit and an RBI. And you can see the excitement in Japan's dugout. And another move by Osan yeah. that has worked out beautifully. He's used two pinch hitters in the inning, and they have both driven home runs. A two run homer by Fukudome, who pinch hit for Imai with a score 0 0. And Fukudome had a two run homer against Kim. Now Miyamoto, pinch hitting for Aoki, knocks in a run here, and here is Nishioka, the switch hitting second baseman, who is 0 for 3 tonight. Miyamoto, the runner at first, he Took a false start from first base and then stopped. Ball way outside. In the first 60 innings of this tournament, Korean pitching allowed only eight runs, but now four runs home against their staff in the one inning. The seventh inning here of their seventh game. It's been the, the unlucky seven so far. Well, as John, as I said earlier, Percentages in baseball do work out sometimes, and Korea was definitely up against the percentages. Not only trying to beat Japan for three straight times, but also trying to go undefeated. I mean, that's very difficult to do in this format, but they have definitely proved that they belong with the big boys. Ichiro on deck. Two and one now to Nishioka. Now, we, we talked about the problems for. Team Japan in those at bats with runners in scoring position and, and everybody in the tournament that's faced Korea. But now three of the last four hitters who have come up in this inning with runners in scoring position have all gotten hits for Japan. Another percentage maybe that exactly. was the percentage due to turn around. Do, do turn around. That's a bloop. That's falling. It is in there. Base hit. Coming around second Miyamoto to third base. Jin Young Lee the right fielder gets it back in. And they keep it going. Now Ichiro comes up with a chance to do some more damage here. The Koreans are not able to stop the bleeding here. Japan has finally busted loose. And Ichiro with a chance to get his third hit of the game. And if he does, it'll knock in at least one. 
The Japan bullpen, by the way, is very busy. As Ichiro gets ready to bat, hitting 333 in the tournament. The catcher, In Shung Cho, is at the mound, and the plate up by Ed Hickox goes out to uh, move them along. Sun, the fourth pitcher of the inning, Jun, who came out in the sixth, started the inning, gave up a double to Matsunaka, who is on deck now. Then, after the double, Young Hyun Kim came on, and he gave up a two run homer to Fukudome, and then drilled the next hitter, Ogo Sawara. After which Satozaki hit a double to knock in Ogo Sawara. Kim came into a 0 0 game when he left. It was 3 to nothing, and now another run is scored. It's 4 nothing. Three of those four runs charged to Kim's record. Ichiro, who has had two singles and two steals in this game, now trying to be the RBI man. He was part of the, the lineup. Machinations of Sadaharu O oh, instead of hitting leadoff where he'd hit all through the tournament, he was moved to the third spot tonight. Slaps it into left field. That's going to be his third hit of the game. Coming in to score, Miyamoto. Nishioka stops at second. Ichiro knocks in the run. It's a five run inning. They have batted around. And the man who started it all, Matsunaka, is coming up again. Well, you have to think about it. What about all the moves that Sadaharo has made tonight have really worked for Japan? I mean, he moved each row down to third so he would get a chance to hit in just a clutch situation like this. And what does he do? He drives in a run. And when he wasn't hitting with runners on, he was starting the inning off by getting on. So he has made very good use of each row tonight as well as the other pinch hitters that he has used. So now Matsunaka, he ripped a double into the right field corner, leading off the inning against the left-hander June, and he's batting again in the same inning. And that's a foul that will land back into the crowd behind the Japan dugout. Well, Osan, sometimes in Japanese baseball, Joe, you'll you'll find out a manager made a move. They'll say, "Why did you do this? Why did you do that?" And they'll say they just had a moment of inspiration. Well. Wah! <laughs> you got to have wah. And Osan has had some inspiration going for him tonight. Inspired in, in for sure. There's a slow bouncer. Kim, the second baseman, throws out Matsunaka. Five runs, six hits. It started with that two run homer by Fukudome, a pinch hitter put in there by Osan. A big job ahead for Korea. They are down five to nothing. The World Baseball Classic. We are in San Diego. I'm John Miller along with Joe Morgan. Peter Gammons, Jose Mota also here with us. Here's Petco Park, the big crowd looking on, and a wet night in San Diego. Here's the pitching summary brought to you by Taco Bell, Koji Uehara. 72 pitches thrown and look at that 16 out of the strike zone and 56 strikes six innings no runs two hits and no walks not tonight and not at any time in this tournament Uehara 16 innings pitch without a walk and, and the point is he can throw 95 pitches so I'm sure that's what Sadaharo wants to get out of him if he can Get him through this inning. He may decide to take him out anyway, but we'll see what happens. Well, he had to, an 11 pitch fifth inning and a nine pitch sixth inning. What? The center fielder, by the way, is uh, Kosuke Fukudome, the man who pinched it for Emai and hit the two run homer to put Korea ahead. So Fukudome out in the center field and over at third base is Miyamoto the man who pinch hit for Aoki and uh, knocked in a run with a single. And there's a splitter in the dirt to Sung Yap Lee the slugger for Korea. Kosuke Fukudome the man had been slumping in this tournament and Osan had that moment's inspiration and put him in there against Byung Hyun Kim and that is when Fukudome found himself. He hit 28 home runs for the Chunichi Dragons last year. Oh man that pitch just disappeared but a foul tip 
to keep Sun Yap Lee alive. He has struck out and lined out to right in this game. Five runs and nine hits for Korea. All of the runs and six of the hits coming in the first half of this seventh inning. That splitter grounded foul up the first base. Uh, when you look back, I mean, the, the fact that Korea has beaten Japan twice already. Korea is 6 0. Japan is 3 3 in the tournament. But they don't get any extra points for that. They just had an easier road here to the semifinals, so to speak, because they didn't have to worry. In fact, I'm sure Japan, they had their bags packed. They may have been on their way home. If not for Mexico beating yeah. the United States. And, and they thought they were. Yeah. They thought Team USA would beat Mexico. But they have risen from the ashes. One and two the count. It is raining in San Diego. That is strike three called on the outside. And I think Sung Yap Lee thought maybe off the outside. One away. Now you see the rain falling here in San Diego. It was raining a little bit before the game. And raining right now here in the seventh. Maybe all too symbolic for the Korean squad that has been so sensational in this tournament. With the team that has been such a revelation. As Hesop Choi fouls one, the count is 0 1. Hesop Choi is the 22nd batter faced by Uehara tonight. And he has thrown a first pitch strike now to 19 of those 22 hitters. He's been ahead of almost everybody all night long. The splitter, Choi, pretty good eye. And he's noted for that in the major leagues. This guy is it's tough to make him swing at a bad ball. One and one the count. Oh, he took a good one right there. Fastball to the inside. Strike two. Well, let's take a look on Kazon right there on the inner half. Right off the inside corner. Oh, and the splitter, strike three, tagged out by the catcher, Satozaki, who grabbed it out of the dirt. Peter Gammons down by the Korean dugout. Peter, what have you got? Well, John, some of the Korean players yesterday were reminding me of just how bitter this rivalry can be and how much the dislike historically has been between the two countries. The Red Sox a few years ago had Sonny Kim, who's on this team, who's Korean, and also Tomo Oko, who's Japanese. They roomed them in double-A. Well, one broken up room. That was the end of that rivalry. But the next year, they had to come back to a hotel one day where the two were in a brawl. They decided they would not make them teammates ever again. <laughs> <laughs> so well, some wisdom right there. Yeah. Base hit for Jin Young Lee, who is now one for three in the game. That is only the third hit of the night for Korea against Japan. So Lee is aboard, and here is Sung Hoon Jung, who had come on in the fifth inning as a defensive replacement. Sung Hoon Jung, a right handed hitter, and he takes a called strike. That was the 84th pitch for Uihara. So he may be pitching his final inning. That's a strike call to the outside. He's gone to a, a three ball count only twice in this game. He has not walked anybody in the game or in the tournament in 16 and two thirds innings now. The Japan staff has only walked 10 in the whole tournament. Man. Strike three call. I think he knew he was nearing his pitch limit. His eighth strikeout. He strikes out the side. On to the eighth inning. Five to nothing, Japan. It's the World Baseball Classic. And Japan is leading five to nothing. As we go to the eighth inning in the rain now in San Diego. The second game of the day, Cuba. With a big upset over the Dominican Republic. And they, they, their two best pitchers combined to shut down the Dominicans today. The Dominican Republic had only one run in that ball game on eight hits, all singles against Yadel Marti and Pedro Lasso to pitch the Cubans into the final. Now, Team Japan with one of their aces tonight, Uehara, who has shut out. Team Korea for seven innings. Now a new pitcher on 
for Korea. Young Soo Bay he is the sixth pitcher of the game for the Koreans facing Tamura the right handed hitter with power fouling it back and out of play Tamura has gone 0 for 3 he's grounded out fly deep to left and struck out and a lot of the fans here have headed for cover I mean it's pretty pretty good rainfall coming down right now not a real heavy rain but a, a steady rain falling. That ball is driven deep into left center field. That's the big part of this yard, but it's still going. It's gone. Sayonara. Six to nothing, Japan. A hanging breaking ball, and Tamura, who hit 36 big flies last year in Japan, launches one in the World Baseball Classic. Well, John, one thing that has happened. With the rain, the wind has died down. There's not any wind. It was blowing in from left center at the beginning of this ball game. So when Tamara Tamura hit this ball, it was not knocked down at all. His third home run of the tournament. And a foul out of play by Fukudome, who had the other home run, a pinch hit home run in the seventh inning. Well, Tamura hits this ball to the deepest part actually of the ballpark now because it's 402 in that gap where he hit it. I mean shorter than center field. That's often where home runs go to die in this yeah. yard along with with right center field which is also 402. 402. They actually moved the right center field has been moved in nine feet this year. But Still you can see deep. the flags John they're limp now they're just lying there but they were blowing in earlier in the ball game. In the rain. And uh, that is caught in left field by Byung Yu Lee and what is now starting to look like a little more treacherous footing out there. Well it's not a, a awful pitch it looks like it's maybe a splitter or something it's away. It was up a little bit meaning belt high but it was not a bad pitch. It just wasn't in the location that he wanted and I think they're going to call it for a while John. The umpires have uh, decided to stop play. It's getting a little too treacherous out there. So Japan has a six to nothing lead here in the eighth inning. And uh, are they going to uh, put the tarp out? Are they going to work on the the, the ground screw is going to bring the water absorbent sand like material out and try and dry off the infield a little bit. But it looks like the umpires might be saying no we, we want you to bring the tarp out which. You know they, this doesn't happen much out here not in San Diego or Anaheim in L.A. They're, they're, they're probably asking what do you mean the tarp yeah, what do we do, do with it. How do we do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you who does that. Do we uh, No, you're the you're the grasper you do it. Wow. No kidding. I mean the Padres began playing 1969 at the San Diego Stadium then they called it Jack Murphy Stadium and Qualcomm Stadium. And in all those years since 1969 they've been rained out what I don't know six or seven times maybe in their whole history. But there they go Joe they're moving pretty well yeah. out there. Remember where we're in Florida I think one day it took them 15 minutes of rain it stopped by the time they got it out there. So the the tarp is going to go on. It is six to nothing Japan trying to end the the dream team's aspirations of getting to that final earlier. And we bring you back after a look back at this afternoon's action Cuba went on to defeat the Dominican Republic three to one the, the mighty Dominicans dispatched by the team from Cuba they are in the finals team Cuba against the winner of this game and after a rain delay of about thirty five thirty six minutes we are ready to resume this game with one out a run in in the first half of the eighth inning young Su Bay the sixth Korean pitcher in the game facing Ogasawara and it was actually a 45 minute rain delay and for the last uh, 20 minutes or so at least if not longer thousands of fans of Team Korea have been chanting the Korean equivalent of USA which is roughly Day Min Han as a pop up foul ground third base side and uh, Jung makes the catch Ogasawara is at number two. Two down of the eighth. Six to nothing. There are the fans with the the drums and the noisemakers, the thunder sticks. 
And it was it was very entertaining, really. Well, it was definitely entertaining. They're trying to entertain themselves and keep their team going. I mean, they know that Korea still has six outs in this ball game. And they just want them to know that they're still behind them. Satozaki. And that's ball one on a fastball. Two down, nobody on. Satozaki drove in the third run in that five run, seven inning rally for Team Japan with a double. Slider for a called strike. A ball on a strike. Six runs, ten hits for Team Japan. No runs, three hits for Korea. Japan got five runs in the seventh inning, breaking a 0 0 tie. That is high for a ball. Jay So started the ball game for Korea, went five shutout innings, but then Jun came on and worked a, a perfect six, but gave up a double to Matsunaka to start the seventh. Young Hyun Kim came into the game then. Slider a little bit high. And now it is three and one. And Kim, after striking out the first man he faced, gave up a two run homer to Fukudome, the pinch hitter inserted by Osan, the Japan manager. One of two moves he made in that inning that paid off. And a sharply hit base hit to center field for Satozaki, the catcher, his second hit of the game. Satozaki is now hitting 450 in this tournament. I think he thought he was going to have to hit to drive in some runs before this is over. Now he's relaxing a little bit. Osan, whose team really humiliated losing two games to Korea. It was bad enough losing the game in Tokyo. But, you know, when they lost that game, although it's the rivalry, both teams already knew they were advancing. It was a game that had no meaning in terms of the tournament itself. But when they lost the other night in Anaheim, Wednesday night, it looked like they were finished in the tournament. Only Mexico's ability to beat Team USA Thursday night enabled Japan to rise up and stay alive moving into the semifinals. Now they are six outs away from turning completely around and instead dispatching Korea. One strike to count to Kawasaki, one for three in the game. But the uh, the fans of this Korean national team, they they have visions of even greater things to come for Team Korea. And if they can come back in this one, that will be a story to tell for years and years and years to come. It is six to nothing Japan. On the outside corner, got him looking. Japan needs to get six outs more to move into the final against Cuba. But to the last of the eighth, and then we go six nothing Japan. And Osan now brings in a relief pitcher, Yasuhiko Yabuta, in relief of Uehara. And whether we had the rain or not, Joe, probably Uehara was finished for the night as he was drawing close. You never know what you're going to get. And that's the same thing that actually happened to the Dominican team today after Bartolo Colon pitched so well to shut down the Cuban team. So here is Yabuta, who also played for Bobby Valentine's uh, champion team, the Chiba Lote Marines. And first ball swinging the pinch hitter, Young type Pac, and uh, he is retired one away. Just like that, one pitch, one out. The World Baseball Classic for the first time the game's greatest players playing for pride and the championship for a complete tournament recap log on to World Baseball Classic dot com. And in, in the earlier games Joe I was on the on the Internet watching the MLB TV that I got through ESPN dot com and following very intently what was going on. At the worldbaseball.com and catching the telecasts and whatnot. So the games that were being played in Japan in the first round and, and all over the world. It was uh, it's kind of tuned in to the, what was going on. And there were multiple games going on at the same time in different different venues there for a while. Well, it was exciting watching on TV, but nothing replaces this live atmosphere here. I mean, this is fantastic. And these and are, it has been all day. These are great fans. Another pinch hitter here, inserted by Inshik Kim, the Korean manager. This 
is uh, Sun Hyun Hong. And the count is 0 1, or rather 0 2 now to Hong. 6 to nothing, Team Japan leading. Last of the eighth. They need five outs more to go to the final. That is off. Is it off the handle or off the wrist? And plate umpire Ed Hickok said, no, that's off, off the wrist or the hand. So he hit by the pitch. I mean, he really did not do a very good job of getting out of the way of that one. He really did not move at all. And I think Hickox had to wait to decide whether it did hit the bat or hit him on the hand. And it definitely hits him on the hand. Right at the base of his hand and wrist. Well, he's going to leave the game, and a pinch runner goes in. Jay Gul Kim is the pinch runner at first base for Hong. Min Jae Kim, now the second baseman, hitting ninth in the order, has flied out to right and grounded out to short. Six to nothing, Japan leading, one on, one out. And that's too low from Yabuta. Yabuta for the Marines last year, the Chiba Lote Marines, seven wins, four losses, and a 3.07 ERA in 51 games. Set up man out of the bullpen for Bobby Valentine. Two and oh, the count. There is in Shik Kim, the manager from Korea. And the fastball right by him. Fastball count, gave him a fastball, couldn't hit it. Well, with a, five, a six to nothing lead, you're going to make them earn everything they get. You're not going to walk anybody. Fastball right in the middle of the plate. Wow. I mean, right in the middle. Dead red right down the middle, and he threw, threw it right by him. Another good fastball in the inside corner this time. Kim at 277 last year with two homers, 37 batted in in the Korean League. He's a veteran, 33 years old. Two and two the count now. Slider in the dirt. He's gone, two down. Ninth strikeout for Team Japan pitching in this one. And the leadoff man, Myungu Lee, will come up now. He is 0 for 3 in the game. Team Korea has only three hits in the game. The championship of the World Baseball Classic will be Monday night right here on ESPN in San Diego, 6 o'clock Pacific time, 9 o'clock Eastern time, 10 p.m. Atlantic time down in San Juan. There were really some exciting games down there in San Juan. I wish we could have done some of those ball games. Seemed like Gary Thorne got all the, the great ones down there. That's up the middle base hit. Young Yu Lee with his first hit of the game. Kim stops at second. And now, Jung Bum Lee will come up. Well, the one thing you realize is that they're not going to go away easily. And Lee just takes this one right back through the middle again. It's a fastball pretty much in the middle of the plate. Yabuta tries to kick it, which I don't know if that would have been very smart. But he just reacted to the ball and tried to stop it with his foot. I mean, this ball is hit very sharply. You can get hurt trying to stop that one. And the Team Japan bullpen is busy. Two men on. And this is the first time tonight that Korea has had two base runners in the same inning. They have been shut down thoroughly. That's a bloop. But to the shortstop and the inning is over. Kawasaki backed up to get it. And two men are stranded. Three outs away from the championship is Team Japan leading six to nothing.
Back here in San Diego, I'm John Miller with Joe Morgan, also with Peter Gammons and Jose Mota, the World Baseball Classic. And Japan now needs only three outs more. They hold a six to nothing lead to set up the final Cuba versus Japan. And uh, Korea with a new pitcher, Sun Hwan Oh. He's been the, the closer. Look at those numbers. 1.18 ERA last year, 115 strikeouts in 99 innings. They pretty much used him as the closer. And he's the guy from the Samsung Lions who got the two strikeouts with the possible tying run on base in Wednesday's two to one victory. Cobb Young Jin is the new catcher. The shortstop Min Jae Kim moves over from second base to play shortstop. And the new second baseman is uh, is Kim. There's a uh, Jay Gould Kim now at second base for Team Korea. John, I think the only team that would have been a surprise, you know, to make it to the final would be Korea. I mean, if you look around, people would think that Japan had a good chance. And if you look at the Caribbean side, you would think Puerto Rico, Venezuela, Dominican, Cuba, any of those teams could make it. But I think from this side, most people thought it would be Japan. United States would be the two that would yeah. you know have a chance to get to the final but so it, it's things have really kind of gone true to form in that direction except for this dream team of the Koreans playing very well all the way Miyamoto thrown out by Jung the third baseman and Miyamoto who got that pinch hit single to knock in run number four in the seventh inning grounds out this time. So Cuba beat the Dominican today three to one back of the two headed pitching monster their two best pitchers both pitched today it was as if uh, Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling both pitched in the same game which they both did in game seven of the World Series in 2001 Randy Johnson ended up being the closer in that one and that's a ball outside to Nishioka but in this case Marti went the first four and a third and Lasso went the last four and two thirds. Only one run for the mighty Dominican lineup against those two today. One ball one strike Ichiro is on deck in the game Monday night. Uh, we haven't heard any official word as to who Cuba will pitch but it could be or Mario Romero or Vicio Andre Odelin. Either one of them could get the start and whichever one starts the other one certainly may also appear in that game and of course it's it's the final so it, just about everybody on that staff other than the two guys who work today could end up in that game if needed and Nishioka is out number two well in game two of this series between these clubs Wednesday night and this was the big throw Jin Young Lee from right field throughout Iwamura in the eighth inning and then the base hit by Bum Lee driving the two runs and then oh got the strikeout to wrap it up Ichiro not happy and then Jay So planted the Korean flag on the mound at Angel Stadium with the Japanese looking on but it could be that Team Japan will Respond by driving a stake through the hearts of Team Korea here tonight. As we said all along, guys, very difficult to beat a team three games in a row in this type of format. Ichiro, who's had three hits tonight, this time fouls out. The inning is over. Three for five for Ichiro as the third place hitter. Last chance for Korea. Three outs of life left to them. We'll be back.
Okay. Six nothing. Japan leading Korea. Last of the ninth, and you know they, there is a little bad feeling about Ichiro and those statements he made before this tournament started about them beating Korea, and Korea won't be up with him in 30 years. But after he caught this pop up off the bat of Ichiro to end the inning, and Ichiro was heading back to the dugout with his head down. Look what the third baseman Jung did with that ball. Well, you know that kind of reminds me of the, when I see the football games where a guy makes a tackle or a good hit, he jumps up celebrating. And the guy he hit says, "Look at the scoreboard." You know, <laughs> I'd rather be in my position than yours, and I'm sure that's what Ichiro was thinking. He didn't react, though, as you could see. Last chance for Team Korea, Akinori Otsuka. He's uh, had a couple of years here in San Diego, the Padres. Now on in relief, facing Sung Yap Lee, who's had such a great tournament. Of all the sluggers, and there were a lot of them in this tournament, Sung Yap Lee has hit more home runs than any of them in this first World Baseball Classic. He has proved himself to be a classic. It's a foul off to the left. He had 30 home runs for Bobby Valentine's uh, Chibalote Marines last year, who won the Japan Series, won it all there. And this year he'll play for the uh, the Yomiuri Tokyo Giants. And will he one day play here? Will he one day play in Major League Baseball? He had a chance to go with the Dodgers a couple of years ago, the story was. But he was offered more money to play in Japan, so he, he took the cash. Oh, and to the count. One and two now. Sung Yap Lee tonight has struck out twice and lined out to right field once. Uehara was able to shut him down. He stopped Choi on deck. Six to nothing. Team Japan leading. Found that one down off his foot. John, another, another interesting sidelight to this game tonight is that if Korea does not score six runs or more here, they would be the only team to go through the entire series without making an error. They haven't made an yeah. error in the classic. Yeah. Seven games, no yeah. errors. Which, I mean, A-Rod thought that was just beyond belief. One away. Otsuka with the high fastball strikes out. Sung Yap Lee. A-Rod said, you know, that many games, and you're telling me not one guy bobbled a ball? Unbelievable. Well, that's the high fastball from Otsuka. And right by Lee. One down, he stopped Choi. He's 0 for 3. Otsuka will be back in the big leagues this year, but not with San Diego. He went to, to Texas. And he, he kind of faded the last several weeks of last season after. Just being a great setup reliever, he was mostly the eighth inning man in front of Trevor Hoffman here in San Diego. He had a fabulous year, his first year in the majors with the Padres. And that's a foul off to the left. And the one thing that the Padres did very well last year, I mean, they, they, they won the division in a weak division. They didn't have a real great record. But if they led you after six innings, they'd had Otska, Linebrink, and Hoffman for the last three. And that was awfully tough to, to beat. And the slider is too low. Two and two to Hesop Choi. He's grounded out, flied out deep to center, and struck out. Team Korea, well, if they are indeed about to be dispatched, they have only two outs of life left. We but certainly have to thank him for the indelible memories that they've given us, such as Sung Yap Lee hitting those home runs. The, the play at the plate, the great catch in that game in Tokyo, the third game of that pool when they won the game. And that's the first walk allowed by Team Japan tonight. Only the 11th walk they have allowed this entire tournament in seven games. Well, if nothing else, Korea has proven, you know, that they can play great defense. You see, they didn't commit an error the entire classic. But they've also proven that they can play, you know, with not only Japan, but all the other teams that were in this classic. 
Yeah. So you know I'm sure that if they're eliminated tonight they're looking forward to the next classic because yeah. they feel like they will be improved even more so by that time. On the rise. Now a pinch runner is going to go over to first base. Uh, Ji Man Song is going to pinch run for Hesop Choi here in the ninth inning. Cuba will be the home team on Monday night if Japan wins this ball game. And Japan is leading six to nothing by virtue of having a better record during the tournament than Japan. One ball and no strikes to count to Jin Young Lee. One and one the count down. Monday night's ball game at six o'clock here in San Diego, six o'clock Pacific time, nine o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. That's a strike call to the outside. And it is one of two. But you know, Joe, it's interesting. If it is, in fact, going to be Cuba versus Japan in the final. I mean, look at all the great stars we saw for the major leagues with the Dominican Republic today on Team USA early in the week, Venezuela. If it's Cuba versus Japan Monday night, one big league player in that game, in the championship game, Ichiro. Team Japan, they were, they probably had their bags packed and ready to go, maybe, as of Thursday after their loss to Korea. But Team Mexico did them a huge favor and defeated Team USA. Strike three called on the outside. Two down. And although we've had the, the very large and vocal group of fans from rooting for Team Korea here, there, there are a lot of fans rooting for Team Japan as well. The former San Diego Padre trying to finish off Team Korea right here in San Diego. Otsuka with a strike call to Jun. Sun Hoon Jun. And it is now 0 2. In fact, Otsuka, still in the big leagues, would join Ichiro as a big league player in that final on Monday. 0 2 the count. 6 to nothing. Japan leading Korea. And that's back out of play off to the right. Koji Uehara, the starting pitcher, seven shutout innings tonight. In the dirt with a slider. One and two moving up on the Ball is Ji Man Song over to second base. But you have to give Jae Young So as much credit also. He pitched a great ball game for Korea. And so, five shutout innings in this game. And in the tournament, in his three starts, 14 innings, one run allowed. So he pitched great. One and two. Two down. Just got a piece of it. Korea stays alive. With two down and two strikes here in the ninth. And it will be Japan and Cuba. Otsuka strikes out the side of the ninth inning, and Japan. Has beaten Korea at long last. The only loss for Korea in the tournament. They still had the best record of any team in this World Baseball Classic, but they will not be in the final. No victory lap tonight. Japan has defeated Korea. And now the Korean team comes out of the dugout as we watch Japan celebrate, but the Koreans came out of the dugout. And they paid homage to their great fans in the stands down there. 
and they all took a bow and doffed their caps to their very vocal fans. So congratulations to Korea for such a great showing in the World Baseball Classic. But it is Sadaharu O's Team Japan that goes to the final against Cuba Monday night at 6 Pacific, 9 Eastern Time. The final score once again, Japan 6, South Korea nothing. Up next is the College Game Day scoreboard. Now this is John Miller for Joe Morgan and our colleagues Peter Gammons and Jose Mota. Thanks for tuning in. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Six to nothing, Japan over Korea at Petco Park tonight. And the World Baseball Classic, one game to go after 38 played. We'll see you here Monday night at 6 Pacific time. Now, from San Diego, good night.